I live, I've lived in Hawaii 40 years. I covered news in Hawaii for 34 years. I know all the players. I've been to Maui on news stories. I've been to every disaster in Hawaii in the past 30 years. Tsunamis, earthquakes, fires. I've covered brush fires. They're lying. They're, they're covering it up. They're not telling the real death toll. Uh, how many children are missing? They didn't. Uh, set off the sirens and they set off those sirens at the drop of a hat not just for tsunamis i they test those sirens every week they had somebody flashed a missile oncoming the sirens went off so when they say oh we only sound the sirens for tsunamis and we didn't want people to run into the fire like they're lying Hi guys, welcome back to the program. I'm so great to have the great remote viewers here with me. Hey Sarah, good to see you again. Well, Sarah, it's always fun to talk with you. And Edward and I have a really special relationship because what we do every week, if I stop and think about what we do, it, it would be almost too daunting because every week we're given a just a target ID like A1, B2, C3, D4. That's all we're told. We have a stack of blank paper and a pen, and we have to, using only our mind and that target ID with no coaching, front-loading, conversation, contact, we got to come up with like a 20-minute debrief on something using only our mental prowess and our psychic awareness. And we do it every week. Well, and... Um, Daz Smith said, when, he's usually on with us the last like three times. I've yeah. done this like a fourth time. But he said in a past interview that, you know, because I said that the CIA says that 3% of the people have this ability, the psychic ability, and 1% of the people are like super talented at it. And that's out of the CIA. But I remember Daz Smith saying, you know, every, well, you guys all said this, we all have this capability. And he was saying that he's right about 65, 70% of the time. And I think that's about what you guys are too, right? Like 65 to 70%, it something connects. Uh, I, I, well, I, we will see how Dick, Dick will have his own answer. Um, but as far as that kind of percentage thing, that never even enters into my radar of importance. And I don't even think about that kind of stuff. The, the only thing that matters to me is working, getting into the next remote viewing session. Uh, that's the only, the only thing that matters to me. So I, I don't have like a checklist personally of, hey, I was right on that one. I was wrong. Um, well, I don't are you care. wrong though? Could it just be that you see things differently and you're, you're just couldn't interpret what this was or the circumstances changed and we changed the future timeline or future. I, I and I, I'll give you my answer to that. And again, and now I'll hand it over to Dick and he'll, he'll give you his answer. But the, the experience of remote viewing is the only thing that matters to me. The a, analyzing the results is, is interesting and important to other people. Not, not to me. I'm only, the only thing I care about is getting into the right here in my laboratory, right here is where all the magic happens. Getting into that remote viewing space and staying in it for as long as, as I can. Why? That is the why, only, you, the why, why? Only thing that's that interesting. Do, do you feel like you're brought to a new place? What, what do you, why do you like I, that? I can answer that for Edward and I'll, okay. I'll give you a, <laughs> I'll give you a good uh, example. We just remote viewed bob lazar now we didn't know it was bob lazar and we didn't know who we were working it for we're given a blind b7 n3 dash c9 l2 work this target is due in 10 days and so i'm working this target and i know nothing about theoretical physics uh 10 dimensional string theory how ufos would move through dimensions but i'm standing there and i i've i've no idea what this target is it's interesting i know it's these guys they're trying to figure out some energy or propulsion system and i close my eyes and i see these layers like pancakes except that i couldn't see an edge and so i i 
drew these layers and I said, why am I seeing this? What does this mean? And all of a sudden my mind starts getting filled with like, well, there's a, a, a something connecting them like a hole. And if you're in this thing and it can change frequencies, it can immediately go to a different layer. And that is how it travels through. And this is stuff that my imagination, I don't think could make that up. But I'm in that remote viewing state, thinking thoughts, knowing things that I wouldn't otherwise know. That's why you like it, isn't it, Edward? Well, that's why I love it. That's why I say like, Remote viewing is my learning environment. You know, I got dyslexia, some learning disability, terrible school. I mean, I'm talking to DF student, but in this, not, not because this you state, weren't smart, because yeah, my because father of my has, brand. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. yeah, because yeah. I'm like this. This is student. No, no, Epically no, no, worst guess. speller in the history of remote. Epic. <laughs> you know, Epic. when, when well, Edward is on target, he loses the ability to spell even simple words that he should would otherwise know how yeah. to spell. Yeah. Like my own name, but yeah. it, it, and it's that state, that space that I, I'm in, in from in my experiences as Dick is explaining as well. It's like a, a, it's like a special comprehension space, a special state of comprehension. And I, and I love it. I love it. Well, you learn, I, I, maybe it relates to like when I learn a new paradigm, or I see the world differently. I'm like, oh, wow, that is just amazing. I suppose it'd be like that almost every yeah. time. Yep. It can what, be, yeah. What was the percentages you just quoted that 1% are really good, that 3% have the ability? Yeah, that's what I, came out of the CIA when they're doing uh, I, about remote viewing, you know, when they, because they mm. were really into it publicly for a while. But I then would, you guys corrected me and said everybody could do this if they train. The humans you, just Ed, are Edward. Do you feel like you're a top one? Per, I don't feel like I'm top one percent. Uh, maybe top three percent, but we don't think of that, yeah, yeah, in terms of uh, we just don't come at it in that way. I do think, um, more some natural ability is important. But just dogged determination and doing it over and over again, is that's how Edward and I have gotten here. Like 100%. Edward and I have done more bad sessions than most other remote viewers have done sessions. Hundred percent. As you were learning how to do it, I have epic fails. I had stacks of paper five feet high of just embarrassment but is it does it get better though right you're better at, oh, yeah. at this with time yeah. and now you're you don't have as many epic failures or you just aren't interpreting it what you think you think it's an epic failure and maybe it it isn't well thanks to our subscribers and here's the plug futureforecastinggroup.com futureforecastinggroup.com people pay to see our work and so edward when i met him was working a normal person's were you in a catering company or something edward i had i had two jobs uh marketing company i was doing a uh, weekends i was working for a local uh food per person and then doing remote viewing on top of all that so yeah it was it was it was a lot of you know yeah that's what it was so Working so to pay thanks, the bills, and then yeah. you're busting your butt remote viewing all the time. But thanks to our subscribers now, Edward can remote view full time. So he yeah. can put the time and energy into doing it correctly. And then there is the uh, rising to the occasion of like tomorrow, we're going to record a session where the cameras come on and they say, show your work. And we're going to show our work to paying customers. So that gets your attention. So you, you have that performance um you know yeah you know a baseball player is going to play better when you give them a uniform and that's right play the national anthem and and put them out on a field and televise it and mm -hmm. that's what we do you're gonna, pretty, you're gonna try sure hard try to do it better you're gonna yeah. be focused at least okay so i have to bring this up the big event 
everybody's talking about it. And I'd like to know more what you saw with the big event. How, what is the time frame we're looking at? I know Cliff High has been reporting that the emotional tension is higher, which I think all of us feel that. So it's not far-fetched that there isn't this higher tension and considerably higher than I remember in my lifetime. So well, what is this event? Edward, why don't you pull out your last page of your last session? Remember the one that we were debriefing with Sean and you said, oh, I forgot doing this one. Do you want me Just to like put it on the share? Last page and, and read that for Sarah, yeah. and her, her audience. Okay, let, let me. Okay, we're not going to give the whole thing away, but <laughs> that was a moment that gave me chills. That when Edward read that, because I know his work, Sarah, what we basically saw. Okay, I'll, I'll give you the, while Edward's finding this session, I'll, I'll give you the backstory on this. We do we do targets every week, blind, double blind. Sometimes we do a past historical event, like, um, you know, an ancient site, go Gobek, Gobekli Tepe, um, Napoleon. Sometimes we do future events. Sometimes we do cryptocurrencies. Sometimes we do interesting people. Uh, we're looking for geopolitical things but it could be in any direction it could be past present future and i think we were tasked a target that had to do with maybe a financial thing that's over the horizon and none of us got it everyone missed but we missed in such a spectacular way that we corroborated out really um the theme of the sessions would be political upheaval and then explodes, uh, a number of explosive events, like almost 9-11 size explosive events. And um, Well, how did you know was, you saw this? You, you drew different events and you drew people's reactions or what were you? Drawing? Well, Daz <laughs> Smith drew a big explosion, right? And was it Daz that drew... Who had the ejecta stuff falling from the sky, Edward? I did, and he did as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, you guys had and that then, last year when I talked to you, but you didn't make sense of it. Did this come out again as a, as an event separate from that last? Because you saw explosions, well, I, and but but is it a different did you, a different viewing? If from my point of view, um, with this particular one which caught me off guard, to tell you the truth, um, that this one took off so much. But when you have, there were there were six viewers on it that worked this. Five of the viewers had similar, very similar data, including an explosive event. Um, so that brings, you know, that's not insignificant to us. Like we've had explosions before. We've all had, uh, we had a big mushroom cloud, all of us in our world events. Uh, we didn't say it was going to be a nuclear bomb. Or we didn't say anything like that. We just said, I'm seeing a big mushroom cloud. Yeah, you don't know what it is. You don't know what it is. That was, that was the last one. That was the last one that got a lot of uh, internet attention was we're doing our debrief and we said, well, what's your most interesting or significant thing? And Daz shows a mushroom cloud. And Edward goes, oh, holy crap, I got a mushroom cloud. And I said, I literally said that. Mushroom. Oh, my crap. We all I drew mushroom clouds. And yeah. so here we are doing our little thing. And, and we hadn't we hadn't seen each other's work. So we're doing it live. We're being recorded. We're going, oh, man, do we put this out? And like everybody's there. Uh, the debriefer is asking us like, do you think there's going to be thermonuclear war based on uh, uh, Ukraine? And we're saying, I, I don't, I don't really want to say that. I just saw this cloud thing, you know. So we put it up and we tried to tone it down, and we published it. And what was it about two weeks later? Yeah. The volcano went off in the Canary Islands, and all across the news was this mushroom cloud in the canary yeah. islands and it was yeah. exactly what we had drawn so yeah it was correct but it wasn't thermonuclear war yeah and we didn't call it that we weren't we weren't saying that either 
You know, yeah. we're not like this is, you know, the, the nukes are going off. We're all dead, you know, get into a lava tube or whatever. We, we did not say that. We said, we're just seeing this and we're put, putting it out there and we don't know what it is. And we're not seeing helps. radiated dead people everywhere. We're just exactly. seeing a big cloud. But that Sarah, helps give... to give some perspective, though, because you guys did see some explosions in the United States, but you don't know what they are. And you, even if you saw a mushroom cloud, it you just you can't say it's from that. It's I tell you, go, go ahead, Dick, and I'll. Well, I remember the one Daz did, where he saw a huge explosion. He said, um, "This is near a port." Um, this is near water. There's a big destructive explosion. He drew this huge, huge explosion. Like we thought, that looks like a, a dirty bomb or a tactical nuke. And I remember when he presented it, I was like, okay, well, we all have off days. You know, I don't, I don't believe that. And then the Beirut bombing, the yeah. that explosion in Beirut, yeah. he had drawn that exactly. So yeah. we do have some oh, track record in this. Sarah, I'll give you an, an example of how this could work. Um, 22 years ago, almost to this week, uh, to last week, in 2001, I was training with Hawaii Remote Viewers Guild. And every Monday night, we'd have class and we'd work a practice target. So it was September 10th, 2001, Monday night. and Glenn gave us a target, LZB2-CQM4 or whatever. And so we all sitting there in the in the classroom, they dim the lights and we all scribble, 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 look, you know, and do our probes and draw what we're going to draw. And, okay, target's over, time for reveal. And we gather up all our paper and put it in. And he takes the target out of the envelope. And the target was Timothy Leary in a flotation tank. In a world where everyday challenges can feel overwhelming, there is hope. Restore Patch is dedicated to making a positive impact on your life by addressing real, pressing issues of our time. Too many of us deal with anxiety, migraines, PTSD, and the need for quality sleep. Restore Patch solves all of this by helping us address our immediate needs to be more productive and effective. There are Restore Patches for all kinds of ailments all of us feel every day. Go to RestorePatch.com slash Sarah and choose from the many wonderful options they have available and regain your life. Say goodbye to restless nights, no energy, and blinding migraines. They believe in promoting a healthier, harmonious, and balanced body where well-being is at the core of their mission. It's time to embrace hope, healing, and a brighter future. Experience the natural power of Restore Patch and take the first step toward a more balanced and fulfilling life. Visit them today to learn more and start your journey toward wellness. Because with Restore Patch, there is hope for a brighter, healthier you. Don't make your health wait. Go to RestorePatch.com slash Sarah. Use code Sarah to save 10% and target the issue that has hindered you from being your best self today. One of those salt water, Epsom salt, where you get in and you're floating in water and it's totally quiet. And they thought that would be a great target because Timothy Leary probably took acid when he was on this. So would you get this acid head floating in water in a box as a interesting remote viewing target? None of the viewers had a guy in a box floating in water. We all had an energetic event. And so we looked at that and we went, wow, everybody was off this week interesting that eh, just a normal monday night you know okay see you next week we'll try again next morning we wake up and the, the planes are hitting the towers the towers are falling down we didn't make a connection we just like oh look at that about a month or maybe two months later our secretary at hrvg the lady that we we generated a lot of paper and she would go to Glenn's house and take the sessions and put them in a binder, you know, put them in a manila envelope, label them, put them, file them in a filing cabinet so we could reference them. So LZT, nah, 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 Timothy Lear quotation. Tape. So she was just looking through that. And she looked and I had drawn an airplane hitting a building. And somebody else drew a long, a big building with a 
smoke coming out of the top of it and it all you know being destroyed stuff you know the shape of airplane wings and people burning jump we drew 9 11 up one side down the other all the people there? on that monday night before it happened and we didn't realize that until we were filing the stuff about a month later so here's here's what happened we were given a uh a target that was supposed to be we're going to go to the time and place where timothy leary was floating in a flotation tank maybe taking some lsd you have consciousness which is a field so all information all events are in consciousness we're here in a local place trying to be non-local to to pick up that as we went into consciousness what was going to happen 10 hours later in 9 11 got our attention and we all diverted to that because it was so, so powerful we, it was it much was more so powerful, powerful than the what they were trying to have you do so it, you just i i my my analogy would be you send your son to the store to like here's ten dollars go buy milk and eggs so i can make an omelet like go right to the store buy milk and eggs and bring them back and so your son's walking to the store and on the way to the store a plane crashes into a house down the street and he sees this plane crash and the fire engines come and the ambulances come and the police come and the crowds around and this fire and it's like and he watches that and he never makes it to the store and he he, he comes home and you say where's the milk and eggs and he says mommy mommy this kind of so it's it sidetracks him it got his attention so 9 11 got the hawaii remote viewers attention on monday night september 10th something got our attention at future forecasting group now here's the here's the wrinkle in the fabric of this one we worked this the week before uh the 9 11 anniversary i worked the second target. we worked one target and we all got this event and so they said well we need to retask them so they said here's another target id please work this and the second time we got even worse stuff so uh it it i worked the second one on september 11th september 11th 2023 could it be that there is like a psychic scar in consciousness from 9 11 so that on the anniversary of 9 11 that's going to bubble back up is it is it a is it a is it a discontinuity in consciousness that comes around because every, everybody's thinking about it on the anniversary and they have is that when you guys memorials saw and they replay it on the news it, is it that, could be that that that's what you it, saw as your big event was on set it was on september 11th or did you see it other we, times no well? we we didn't get a date but we the time that we were working the target was the week of the 9 11 anniversary yeah that's what i was wondering so when yeah. you're working the we target, don't we didn't put a time on this event we think it is uh over the horizon it could be three but, but months six months you think it could be just the scar from september 11th or did you draw other pictures to show that this could be something much broader and bigger than september 11th well I, in my opinion um the 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 potential that uh the 9 11 thing seeped into our sessions and um we were influenced by it because we've all been you know went through the trauma of it, you know, 20 something years ago. Um, but that's a, that's a theory. It's what's one possibility of why we all had this similar kind of data. I'm not sure personally, I'm not sure if that is what uh, influenced us or where our sessions went because of that. I, I'm, I'm very, I'm very skeptical of that notion. I remember when I was doing all my sessions, um, I wasn't the 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 notion that we were even in the month of September wasn't even an issue for me. Didn't even come up in my mind. Yeah. Um, and none nothing like that even entered into my awareness of oh I should you know maybe I'm I'm just going to put this over here I'm thinking about nine eleven right now I mean it wasn't even even on the radar I, my my feeling is it. It wasn't, um, 
we were not being influenced by that. That's my that's my assessment of watching all of us go through our stuff. Um, I didn't see anything in there that would resemble anything that would be a residue of, oh, I'm remembering 9-11. I didn't see I, anything like that. I did have one thing, because when I was doing my session, um, I saw a person standing on a ledge. And I immediately thought, oh, that reminds me of 9-11. And I thought, I, today is the anniversary of 9-11. And I thought, I don't I don't think I went so far as to think would they be giving us a 9/11 target on 9/11 it um your brain when you remote view becomes really hyperactive like there's so much you're you're tapped into this and the the amount of data that's going through your brain is is mind-boggling so I did I did have a brief like oh 9/11 but it wasn't until the very end of my session. Well, that's Edward, a good, look, go, go ahead if you want. <laughs> go ahead. You, and then we'll, I, I want to, I want you to. Well, yeah, I was going to say that if the drawings didn't resemble 9-11, then it's a new thing more than likely. It, and it matches. What it didn't look like 9-11. No, we didn't have planes hitting buildings. It was, it was. What was the it? The impact felt 9-11-ish. But okay. the event itself didn't feel 9-11-ish. You, you don't understand, you understand know, yeah. what I mean. No, the impact, the trauma. Like, like, the like one of these of things that we're all going to know where we will remember that one. Like and you we think it might be a series of events like that, plus financial. We're doing some more analysis on it right now. And we're, we're yeah, we're picking up. It might be several different events. So, and well, I know you guys don't want to dive into it too much because it scares people and you want to save it. But I, I think people just knowing about this will flock to your channel yeah. and figure out what the heck is going on here because this tension is so high. What were you going to ask? Edward? Well, when we do our when we do our debriefs, um, we don't compare notes. So we have four viewers and we do our work. And then we get together on Zoom and then we present our data. And it's interesting, like, I can see the other guys on uh, Zoom when I'm presenting mine, and they're going, whoa. And sometimes Edward recites his stuff, and we all break down. I mean, we have to, a couple of times we yeah. stop the recording, because Edward gets real emotional. And when you gave this last page, I was, like, doing, I was only half paying attention, and all of a sudden I was going, Oh my God. So read that last page, Edward. Oh yes, read put, this. Put that up and now keep in Let mind, sure. Shara, that we have like five or six, five other viewers or at least four other viewers that have given all their data of all this stuff. And then Edward has given three sessions, which is was, page after page. It after was page. four and I thought I did three. Well, let's, I need to, you need to enable the sharing, uh, Sarah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, anyway. I went three sessions and I was like, oh boy, I'm done. And he's like, oh no, you're not done. There's another No, session. you had one more oh. and you'd forgotten about it. I'm so like, you, you, you start about? reading it and. Uh, you should be able to see This is. Okay. This is. Okay. Is this the one you're talking about, Dick? Yeah, I think so. With this one. It was down. This one? Or was it a different yeah one? yeah like those last couple pages yeah that's two three pages yeah this was getting it was getting really it was getting really intense okay um, read that yeah because here i am i'm in this you know cheyenne mountain military base area which is not uh, a here's your here's your, oh you <laughs> almost spelled cheyenne right yeah hey i'm doing i did pretty good there um but they're down here and they're monitoring stuff this was really this was really interesting. I, I was really into this, but these guys are watching stuff and they're monitoring stuff. And it was like these guys are looking at stuff that we we don't know what they're looking at. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like to to go into this part of the session, be like, they're looking at what they can, man, they can see a lot of stuff. And but they're looking at like a boat, and they're looking at you know they're 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 watching something, they're monitoring something. And so I'm like, what are what are they onto here? And it was this uh, this thing 
that was in a container on a ship. And um, just like we were saying earlier, Dick and I were saying earlier that just because we get a big explosion in our session, we don't automatically say it's a nuke. You know, we cannot do that. And so I, the same thing applies in all of our sessions. You know, I don't know if this thing is radioactive or just could be just some electronic device. And that's why it's giving me this kind of energetic uh, thing coming out of here. But it's on one of these container ships. And I don't know where it's coming out of, maybe the Mediterranean. And there's these people in there and they're, uh, they're with this thing and they're part of the delivery of this thing. You know, these, and they're sitting in there with, with it. And um, so the notion, again, Worst case scenario, it's radioactive and something's going to be detonated or activated. Uh, best case scenario, it's something valuable and it's glowing because it's valuable. You know, you have to, you have to be discerning. It's easy to go off on a tangent in a, in a session, you know. Imagine. Um, so then I had to ask, well, what happens if thing reaches its destination? A level of incineration. And this session ended here. Uh, as it changes hands and move to a secure, a secure location. And, and Dick may, maybe have had the same reaction, but when I got that, because, because I had forgotten all about this session, I got down here and I was like, what happens next? What, what, what happened here? I was like, what the hell, what now what, you know?